Morning YouTube. Um, this is Saturday. We've been camped out at Ava at the World Championship show all week long. And in con coordination with the show, the Missouri Trail Horse has, uh, Association has a gated trail horse sale today just up the road. So we're going to go through today and I'm going to show you what I do at an auction. The do's and don'ts, um, what to look for, how to check out a horse. The main thing is always listen to your wife at an auction. <laughs> and um, also, it's important, this is something I feel strongly about, not to be a color snob. However, color does sell better if you're trying to make a profit on training a horse. So if you're going to spend a half a year or a year training a horse, and at the end, your, your end product will bring twice as much if it's a little flashy, you do kind of have to take that into consideration because you're already taking a gamble at an auction. When you're breeding for uh, performance horses or to get a quality animal, I always say take into account disposition and how they travel and their pedigree, not their color. Don't breed for color because if you're breeding for a trait like that, you're giving up something on the back end, in my opinion. Some horses have it all, which is great too. It's just a bonus. But let's go and get registered and get our catalog and we'll start talking about horses. Got to the first pin here and see this beautiful horse. Flax and mane and tail, it's crimped and braided so you can tell she's all trimmed up so you can tell somebody's messed with her quite a bit. She is shod and her feet aren't they're shod right like I know the angles and uh, she's level so this mare is probably broke already broke to ride and she's number 43 so I'll look her up now I'm really not too interested in horses that are already broke to ride because um, if they're at a sale and they're broke to ride I always worry there may be something wrong with them plus I have the ability and a method that I like to use on my own to break a horse or train a horse, start a horse, whatever vernacular you want to use, pretty quickly. So I can go from unstarted to, to riding in, in two weeks and I'll know that the horse has a sound mind and um, hasn't been abused or anything. So even though this horse is beautiful, unless she goes really cheap, I probably won't bid on her because I think she's already trained. Okay, from the road, I was pretty excited about the color on this, like we were talking about flashy colors and stuff. But honestly, make sure the owner's not around when I say this. He's pretty jug-headed. His head is bigger than his than it should be for the size of his body. Um, it's, he's a little bit cow-hocked in the back. He has a real big scar there on his ankle, which might mean he's a little bit accident-prone and he's short for uh, being shot. He is shot correctly. Somebody's done a good job shooting. Oh, he's tied oh, up. he's tied too. up. I didn't even notice that. That's funny. The other one there with the, the sorrel is kind of good looking, but it has a big gash out of its knee. Of course, it's kind of, it looks like about a month old gash, so it might heal better than what it is right there. Um, and then this gray in the background has actually has really good hips really good chest its front legs are really straight and for a yearling its chest is pretty wide its head looks good so in this pin I like the gray the best um, this other sorrel has really good hips but its hips are built more like a quarter horse I'm almost thinking it's a quarter horse I bet it's grayed and, and has some quarter horse in it just from the way it's built which isn't a bad thing it's pretty but I'm only going to be bidding on registered horses today. They don't have numbers on yet, so we can't tell you what, exactly what they are. So this looks like a yearling here. It's not shod, but it has really good hooves. It has some kind of warts or fungus all over its nose, which kind of gives me pause. But it is beautiful, and it's got long legs, really nice hips, good conformation. Um, if it's a registered horse, I will be interested in, in this one. Um, it's younger than what I wanted. I wanted something that I could ride right away, you know, three-year-old or something or coming three-year-old. But for the right price, um, 
I won't I won't let this one go through too cheap. Let me see what it is. Um, I'm thinking it's a I'm thinking it's a Philly, but I can't quite see where it's at right now. Hey babe, turn around. I like how she's reacting to my notepad. It's not what I'm wanting. I'm wanting her to turn so I can see, but she's just curious. That's nice. I'll be keeping an eye on that one. Number 46 here. It's a little buckskin filly. We actually saw her and her mama sell at this sale last year, and the owners have come back. They've, they're they keeping the mama, and they're selling the full off now, so she's just over a year old. I was wanting something older that I could work with now, but whenever you find one that's been messed with and handled and built like this one, um, you can't let them go too cheap. So I'll bump her up for the people a few times anyway when she goes through. <laughs> Almost as iron gray as iron gray gets. Yeah. Black leg, black mane, black tail. But yeah, it's a nice colt. It's pretty. It's built good. <laughs> black. YouTube. So, found a few horses that I like. Unfortunately, the owner has branded them with a branding iron. That may be all well and fine for stock horses working out on the range or for your own personal horse. Um, however, if you're going to try to make something you know, that you can resell to the public as a family pet. You know, a forever horse for somebody is what my goal is. Don't brand your horses. And you know, nobody is not gonna buy a horse because it's not branded, but there is a lot of people that won't buy a horse because it is branded. Just really knocked them in the head on the resale. This gray here, built really well, really pretty horse, but it's branded. Same with that sorrel in the back. Really pretty horse, two two white stockings, blaze. I'd really be interested in that one, but it's branded as well. And then the other thing, all of their birth dates seem really young. And um, maybe they just take better care of their horses than I do. Maybe they feed them better. They're as big as my two-year-olds, or coming two-year-olds, and they all are just turning one. So unfortunately, about four or five of the best horses here that I've seen so far in the age bracket I'm looking for are branded and I'm getting a little suspicious on the birthday so we're gonna we're gonna have to pass on everything we've seen so far just walking around looking and that horse caught my eye um, I said I didn't want anything old enough to be broke but she's awful pretty so I looked her up she's a 16 year old Palomino Sabino which means her own basically and uh, I don't know. She's just beautiful. Got good papers too. Um, but a little older than what I want and I'm not looking for anything broke. This is not what I the age bracket I was looking for, but she's bred so well and she's so beautiful. I gotta I gotta check her out in case she accidentally goes too cheap in the sale ring that I have to bid. She's taller than I she's taller than she looked from a distance, which is nice. Like I said before, she's shot well. Whoever shot her knew what they were doing for sure. She's got good hooves. She's got that, uh, oh, I forget the name of it, but the stuff to make texture grab on asphalt. So like, we're not talking about a $50 shoeing job, we're talking about a $150 shoeing job. Hmm. <laughs> See that? Yeah. That's that stuff for getting texture. She does have a few scars on the inside of her legs. <laughs> Pretty calm demeanor. Hello. Is that your? No. No, it's not ours. Fixing to be. Huh? No, I said I said fixing to be. So all this flecking and stuff it has under its neck, and these light, the light hip flanks and the the roaning. This is what I would call a Sabino. It's got many of the Sabino markings. It has flax and mane and tail. She's out of legend, which I've had several horses out of legend. Some of them had some attitude problems, but some of them have been pretty nice as well. This one seems pretty sweet. There she is. This is the one we've been looking for. You're 16. Wonder why she's not out yet. 
Hey baby, we need to see you. Oh, I like her. Oh, uh, yes, she loves to stick her head through a ball bar fence. Yeah. Oh. That's why her mane looks like that. If I walk up there, she ain't gonna kick me. No. Hey, anyway, she never girl. has. So let's put that oh, she you don't care girls. if we film this, do you? No. Okay. We. Uh, so yeah. first off, let me introduce so. her. We just found one of the horses we're interested in, and cool thing is, this is some family of mine, some kin of mine. So my grandpa, who taught me everything about fox trotters, and in her dad, our uh, uncle, it's my grandpa's uncle, is her dad, and they were the same age, grew up together, kind of like cousins, uh, playing together, and they looked a lot alike. Everybody confused them for brothers for years. So this is Susie Duncan. And I've known her my whole life, just only see her once or twice every couple of years. But um, this is a two-year-old filly that she's selling, and it's one of the two that I was most interested in seeing. So we've been looking for her all day, or all morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in there and check her out. Okay. What's her name? Miracle. Miracle? Oh, you're built pretty. Hi. Hi. Yeah. You're okay, you're okay. She's not been handled a whole lot. But she is pretty, got a short mane. She's been rubbing it out on the barbed wire. But I don't see anything wrong with her. We'll see how she goes. Okay, so it's sale time. We've walked around 10 times looking for everything. There's no organization to these sales. So number one might be over there. Number two might be over there. You can't find everything you need to find. Have not found the black two-year-old yet that we wanted to look at. So we're just gonna have to wing it in the sale. Um, but we're gonna get in the sale. We'll follow along with the catalog, reading the descriptions as they come in and maybe walk out back what, to look at the on-deck ones. And uh, we'll film a little of that when we have a horse coming up. And we'll try to, try to let you see the uh, ones that we had of interest sell like that little Sabino over there and the four-year-old and um, then some of these young ones that we wanted to bid on. On the way into the sale barn, the owner of the black two-year-old overheard us talking about her and we went to look at her. He rode her all around and she did act pretty decent, but she didn't show a lot of gait and he was really trying to sell her pretty hard, stating that he didn't have enough time for young horses or two-year-olds and he wanted something a little older. Make money every day, young. Five fifty, six hundred. The five and a half. That's a turn. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be five and a half. You're gonna be six hundred. The five fifty now six. Five and a half. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be six hundred. The seven fifty, eight hundred, five hundred now high. The five hundred now high. Five and a half. Now six hundred. Gonna be six hundred now high. Five now six hundred. Gonna be two thousand. Now gonna be, 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 gonna be two thousand dollars. Gonna be two, gonna be two thousand. Gonna be, gonna be, gonna be, gonna be, gonna be two thousand dollars. Come on. Be a hundred now. Gonna be ten. Now gonna be ten. Two-year-old Palomino filly. It's one I'm pretty interested in. We'll see what happens. Rest of Missouri Foxtrot Palomino filly was foaled June the 22nd of 2020. You talk about nice. All right, a locker, two thousand dollars. Come on. Now, 
Let me explain some of my thought process and the strategy that I was deploying here. The auctioneer was asking me for an $1,800 bid. I had already made my mind up to only go to about $2,200 as my max bid on this filly. Well, I knew if I bid $18, the next bidder would bid $19, and then I'd be to $2,000 anyway. So as a show of force and to try to back them off, to show them that I mean business, I just held up two fingers and raised the bid higher than the auctioneer was asking. You can do that at any time. Auctioneers get excited. Really, they like it. So then that would also mean that he would go back to the next bidder for 2100 which would then put me in the lead at 2200 I had already planned if they bid, when they bid 21 for me to step right on top of their bid and bid 22 to try to back them off if my first plan of attack didn't work I had a backup plan let's see if it works and if they go all the way up to 22 we'll just have to back off and let her go Okay, it was going back and forth quite a bit, and we got to 16, so I just bumped her to 2,000 just to try to stifle the people, and it worked. So we got her for $2,000. All right, we came out here and saw Miracle. That's the two-year-old's name. The awesome part is, you know, we're two hours from home. They're from our same hometown. I'm, like I said before, we're I'm family with Susie. We're related, and I've known Ralph for years. So he's going to haul her home for me, save me a whole four-hour round trip coming back to get her. So everything worked out for a reason. Well, we got ourselves a horse. We got the two-year-old filly, and then we just, the sale was moving along kind of slow, and we have so much to get ready for the show tonight that we didn't stay to bid on that buckskin yearling that I wanted to bid on. Um, kind of unfortunate. I bet she goes cheap. I may run back up here after we get some lunch and feed the kids and just see what she sells for because uh, we're only three miles from the showgrounds but we have so much to do today that i uh kind of feel rushed to get back to the showgrounds well after lunch the girls had all the chores well in hand at the showgrounds so emory and i ran back to the sale got there just in time to see this buckskin sell the bidding slowed down at twelve hundred dollars and i bid one time but then it went up quickly to over 2800 and I never bid again. But I was happy for the owners. They got a good price. Next up was this Sabino. And with her being out of legend, her bidding went pretty quickly. I got in when she was still at about $1,000 and bid her up to 2500 But she ended up bringing over $4,500. The little black two-year-old sold pretty well, too. I wasn't very interested in her. I just didn't feel that connection. Sometimes you just kind of have to go with your gut. But she brought, I think, $3,800. One of the reasons was the man was really trying to sell her to me before the sale, saying he didn't have time for young horses, but then he went in there and bought a couple more yearlings. Anyway, we were happy to wind up with Miracle here. I'm pretty sure she was the highest quality horse there. She's very elegant looking, very well built, and has a good mind. I've been working with her a lot since the sale. To see those videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you get notifications. Mm -hmm.